Hey there, how's it going? It's your muscle building coach, Lee Hayward here with another Ask Lee video Q&A. And this one's coming from Kyle. And Kyle's asking, uh, says, I was doing a lot of reading lately about the pros and cons of intermittent fasting. I even tried it for a few days and it wasn't that hard to adjust to, but I was worried about muscle loss. I was wondering if you could touch on the topic since it goes against the typical three hour eating frequency involved in most bodybuilding diets. Very well, Kyle. Uh, first off, intermittent fasting. What is it? All intermittent fasting means is you're not eating all day long. And when you look at it, everybody is intermittent fasting. Everybody is because, for example, you go to bed at night and then if you don't eat again till breakfast the next morning, then technically you fasted all night long. Hence the word breakfast. We're breaking the fast in the morning with our breakfast. So everyone is intermittent fasting to some degree. And this is nothing new. This is the way we ate forever. Intermittent fasting is as old as eating itself. I mean, back in the hunter-gatherer days, we never had the luxury of eating every three hours. You ate whenever you killed something, whenever you uh, caught something or found something or whatever. It wasn't go to the refrigerator and, oh, here's food available all day long. It was whenever you had food that you found or caught or killed or whatever that you ate. So this is nothing new. This has been going on since the beginning of time. And how people are using it for fat loss is a way to restrict calories. Ultimately, if you want to burn body fat, you have to be in a caloric deficit. You have to eat less calories than you burn. And intermittent fasting is one way to do that. I'm actually a, a fan of this style of eating because I find it easier to eat fewer meals than it is to try and keep six meals a day but have ridiculously small meals. And if you try and be in a caloric deficit and keep high frequency of meals, your those meals have to become very small. And just to give you some examples, I'm going to crunch some numbers for you. Let's say that you need a 2,000 calorie a day diet to be in a caloric deficit. Now, these numbers are going to vary for, for everyone. I mean, you're going to have to figure out how many calories you burn and all that. I mean, depending on your body size. But just for our example, let's say you need 2,000 calories. If you were to have that broken down into six meals a day, that is 333 calories per meal, which is nothing. That is very small. I mean, you will eat a few bites and whoop, your 333 calories are gone and you'll be leaving the table hungry. I would much rather to break that down even more. So let's just say we're gonna have our same 2,000 calories and instead of uh, six meals, we're gonna have three meals. That gives you 666 calories. You know, you can eat twice as much per meal. In my opinion, that is more satisfying and probably an easier diet to stick to because when you sit down to the table to eat, you're actually getting some eating satisfaction rather than just picking on a few bites of food and then having to leave the table hungry. I mean, most people would rather have a few good solid meals than multiple little tiny meals. And from a practical point of view, it's a lot easier to schedule a few bigger meals than it is to schedule multiple smaller meals. And the whole idea of why we got into six meals a day to begin with isn't so much from a fat loss standpoint, it's root is from a muscle building standpoint. I mean, if you look at uh, bodybuilders who are trying to bulk up, if you can't eat enough food in three meals per day to be in a caloric surplus, then the easiest way to go about eating more food is to just add extra meals. Rather than trying to force feed more per meal, let's just add more meals to your day. So rather than three meals, you have four meals or five meals or six meals. I mean, some people go off the charts and are eating, eating all day long, literally. So you can do that to increase your calories. You can kind of do the opposite to decrease your calories. And when you're getting into these intermittent fasting plans, I mean, there's numerous plans out there. Some people will fast for 24 hours straight one day a week. Some people will just uh, extend their normal daily fast. You know, like we fast all night long while we're sleeping. Some people will just extend that even longer and try and squeeze their meals around their workout time, probably like a few hours before their workout and a few hours after their workout, eat the majority of their food around that time. And, you know, I'm not saying one is better than the other, 
Try it. See what works for you. See what works for your schedule and what one you enjoy. What one you're going to stick to. That's the one that's going to work for you. The one that you're going to stick to long enough to actually see some results. As for the muscle loss issue you were worrying about, honestly, muscle is not as fragile as a lot of people think. You know, some guys are scared that, oh my God, if I miss a meal, I'm going to shrivel up and, you know, lose all my size. That's not the case. Our muscle is not that fragile and you can go uh, several hours without eating. You can even go a day without eating. You're not going to shrivel up and, you know, lose all your muscle mass. What you will lose in the temporary time of non-eating is just some water weight and some glycogen. But as soon as you eat again, you're going to just refill those glycogen stores. And as soon as you, you know, rehydrate yourself and everything else, you'll regain the water weight. I mean, our bodies are constantly going up and down in body weight. And that's just, again, food volume, intestinal food volume, glycogen, and water levels. It's not the actual muscle tissue that you are losing. I mean, you can kind of think of your muscles like a balloon. They're swelling up and they're shrinking down, but they're not actually, you know, building the actual muscle tissue or losing the actual muscle tissue takes place over a much longer period of time. It's not from meal to meal or, you know, day to day. It's something that takes place over a longer period of time. So don't worry about the muscle loss issue because it's not going to happen if you go a few hours without eating. Anyway, that's kind of like uh, intermittent fasting in a nutshell. I mean, uh, you can Google search it and there's oodles and oodles of information about it and everyone you talk to will probably have some different plan that they like to follow. Bottom line, it's, it comes down to calories in versus calories out. If you're in a fat loss pr uh, phase and you want to burn body fat, you have to be in a caloric deficit. You have to eat less calories than you burn. And one of the easiest ways to do that is just simply cutting down on your meal frequency. If you eat less meals, you know, you're going to get less calories. Simple as that. So hopefully that helps, Kyle. Uh, if you have any other questions or comments or feedback, whatever, feel free to post it in the comments below, and I'll chat to you down there. In the meantime, have yourself a fantastic day. Take care. Over now.